Alright, so we have the full chapter spoilers for One Piece chapter 1118, and we're definitely finding out more about Bonnie and her transformation into Nika, at least her fruits variation of Nika anyway, which leads me to believe there are going to be more characters that transform into Nika other than Bonnie and Luffy. It probably sounds crazy to say that I think Teach is going to have a form of Nika as well, and obviously each awakening of Nika is going to be unique in its own way. But I don't think it's solely going to be a case of your fruit determines your awakening, I think it's going to be more revolved around your personality. And also the will that you inherited from the devil fruits. I think there's going to be a lot more nuance to the awakening of Gear 5 and Nika. I think there's going to be a point where Luffy transforms into Gear 5 and he's not going to be joyful. And I think who you are is going to determine how you awaken these fruits. Anyway, like and subscribe and let's get straight into the chapter. So the spoilers this week see the protagonist Monkey D. Luffy team up with Jewelry Bonnie at the issues and to take on a Gorosei member. While Bonnie would normally be severely outclassed by the Gorosei members, she unlocks a new form in this installment's final pages which sees her able to fight shoulder to shoulder with Luffy. Which shouldn't happen, but it does anyway. The title of this chapter is Be Free. The beginning of the spoilers focus on Yamato's cover story, showing Yamato leaving the capital while eating a bento. The spoilers then focus in on this story's content, starting off immediately where the last one ended by showing the Iron Giant sinking into the sea. The Iron Giant is thinking about Joy Boy as it's sinking into the sea, asking where he is and saying he thought he was here just a moment ago. A bit more of Dr. Vegapunk's message is then played, this time being just his voice from the transmission transponder sound rather than the full broadcast. Dr. Vegapunk is heard saying, the name is with no other words shared, and I believe Dr. Vegapunk might be sharing the name of the original D, which may be Nefertari D. Lily or Emu, who may very well be the same person. I'm sure we'll find out more about the Will of D soon though. We then begin seeing the global reaction to the interruption of Dr. Vegapunk's message. In Alabaster, Koza is shown slightly pondering what's happening while citizens argue about whether or not Luffy or the world government is to blame. In Whiskey Peak, where Miss Monday and Mr. Nine are seen with their son, Citizens are in disbelief that the world government would kill Dr. Vegapunk regardless of what he did given his genius. So the people of Whiskey Peak think Dr. Vegapunk's death was unjustified regardless. In Dress Rosa, Leo and Rebecca are seen arguing about whether or not Luffy is responsible for Dr. Vegapunk's death. The focus then returns to Egghead Island, where Vegapunk York wastes no time by reminding the Gorosei that Vegapunk Lilith and Vegapunk Atlas are still active. She also emphasises that punk records will keep growing even after Stella's body death. So yeah, Stella's brain-computer thing is still learning despite the fact that he's dead. Which is pretty cool. We then see the Gorosai decide to prioritise eliminating these remaining Vegapunks. So according to the spoilers, the Gorosai want to kill the remaining Vegapunks, not capture them. This is why Luffy, Dory and Broggy are shown boarding the giant warrior's pirate ship. Bonnie, Sanji and Frankie are also confirmed to be on board. While the Marines keep fighting a losing battle against the giants for the sake of pride and the force they've shown. Bonnie then makes things worse for the marines by using her powers to transform Vice Admiral Dull and Bluegrass, as well as the weaponized sea beasts Bluegrass was riding into children. This in turn allows the giant warrior's pirate ship to set sail, while Bonnie teases the two disgruntled Vice Admirals. We then see Luffy greet Oimo and the almost unconscious Kashi, while Sanji contacts Nami and says they've successfully set sail. Nami then tells Sanji they're taking off too, but no news is given regarding Zoro, Jinbei, or the Gorosei member Venus. Luffy then heads to the ship's kitchen and begins eating all the food he can find, while the Gorosei member Mars flies to the giant warrior's pirate ship and attacks it with a beam. Three giants use their shields to block part of the attack, but a section of the ship still catches fire. At this moment, Luffy suddenly reappears topside and transforms to his Gear 5 form, exciting the ship to fight again. The oceans in the ship shake from Luffy's Gear 5 power while he calls out to Bonnie. He tells her they should go together since she wants to hit the Gorosei too, to which she says she can't do it. However, Luffy says that while he may not understand her power, he knows she can do it. 
Bonnie then first remembers meeting Luffy on Egghead and how she said he looks like Nika when he's free. Bonnie then remembers Kuma's flashback, which doesn't make much sense to me because I don't know how you could possibly remember someone else's flashback. So to correct that, Bonnie has her own flashback. Specifically the moment he promised to raise Bonnie in front of Ginny's grave. She then uses her Toshi Toshi devil fruit powers to transform into Nika. Because you know it only took Luffy 1100 chapters to do that. Bonnie calls her ability to transform into Nika Distortion Future. And this sees her transform into her own version of Nika. Although she emphasised to have the exact same transformation as Luffy's. With white clouds floating around her neck, white curly hair, white clothes except her sash, and eyes with ring-like pupils. And it's interesting she gets the ring-like pupils, because a lot of people assume that meant that the Oppo Oppo no Me was used on them, in order to grant them immortality, which doesn't seem to be the case. A double page spread sees a transformed Bonnie posing next to Luffy, who is laughing in a way similar to when Gear 5 was officially introduced. Bonnie, meanwhile, is mirroring a pose of Luffy's from the Volume 106 cover. The Marines and Giants alike are in shock, with the former calling them White Giants, while the latter recognises the pair as two Nikas. We then see the Coruscant members Saint Mercury and Saint Jupiter sense a weird presence deciding to go towards the giant warrior's pirate ship. Luffy and Bonnie meanwhile prepare to face Mars, who silently stares at them. The issue ends with the Iron Giant activating once more under the sea saying he's here. And then there's no break next week, so hopefully we'll hear the end of the Iron Giant's message. Like and subscribe for more spoilers and reviews coming soon.